What's up guys, welcome back to the shop. I'm super excited about this episode because the guys at Aces EFI seen us on the power tour in the mail truck and they contacted us and said, hey, we wanna work with you. I wasn't quite ready to tear into the mail truck just because I have a super, super busy schedule with that, going to shows and doing all the other things we're gonna be doing with it. I said the next project on the list is my son's third gen Camaro and they hooked it up with a kill shot unit. We're gonna go through and show you all the ins and outs of the kill shot unit, how to install it and how to get it running, but I just can't wait. You guys gotta check this thing out. This Camaro looks amazing. Let's take a look at it. So this is the uh, finished product with the kill shot unit on. We got some new valve covers. We did a wire tuck on it, uh, eBay special intake, but man alive, does that thing look killer in there. All right, guys, one of the really cool things with teaming up with Aces is they hooked us up with a promo code. So if you use promo code FTP10, it's gonna save you 10% off on anything you purchase on their website. You know, they whether it's a kill shot unit, some LS stuff, they got tons of cool stuff on there. You gotta go check out their website because I guarantee you they have something that's gonna fit your build. Oh, and you use that promo code to get yourself a free hat. Mm, pretty good, who couldn't use a free hat? So. Few things we need to address right off the bat. We need to make sure that we have a good running motor, make sure there's no blow by, rod knock, ticks, whatever. Because you put go faster parts on a bad motor, guess what? You got a bad motor with go faster parts, it's not gonna fix the problem. And then we need to make sure that we have an adequate fuel system that can handle the pressure. So if you're running from a carburetor, you know it's running at like six PSI, that pump ain't gonna be enough to run this. These things need a minimum of 43 PSI to run. Our TBI unit, I think was around nine PSI, so that wasn't gonna cut it. So we put an in-tank Walbro 255 in there. Um, and then the other thing is fuel filtration. That is probably the biggest thing with this is you gotta make sure that we're keeping all of the debris out of the injectors because these injectors have way smaller ports, way tighter tolerances than like a carburetor. So anything that would get by your factory filter is just gonna go right into that and it's gonna plug up your injector. So what we did is we went with a 10 micron filter and we mounted it right off the feed line in the engine bay here. So it's, it's easy to get to that and we didn't wanna go ahead and redo all the lines and all that stuff. So we still have the factory TBI filter back there and then we just added another filter in just to be safe, just to make sure that we're not getting any trash that's in the tank or bad gas or whatever up in there and plugging up our injectors. So that being said, now that we got that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into how we got this thing running. Oh yeah. So Jackson, what is this? This is my 1992 Chevrolet Camaro. It's my first car and it has a 305. Uh, TDI with a T5 five-speed manual. Um, some modifications that I plan to do to it are some um, long tube headers and wide pipe, um, a wall row 255 fuel pump, and this upgraded intake to fit our Aces Hill Shot TBI EFI. And See what we got in the Aces box. Ooh. Got some hats. Shirts. Hats and shirts. Mm -hmm. Heck yeah. Some Aces hats. All right. Some instructions. Mm -hmm. Looks like. What do we got there? Throttle plate. Yeah, throttle, throttle cable mounting bracket. Harness. Engine harness, nice. There's all sorts of stuff in here. Mm -hmm. That's a cool looking box. Yeah. Is this is the blackjack, so it said? Black. Sort of said something. Blackjack Pro Series distributor. Mm. There you go. Nice distributor. Oh yeah, that's gonna be pretty way sweeter than what you got in there now. 
right. What else we got in there? Okay, ignition coil. Yeah, that's self-explanatory. Yeah. Coil. There you go. Pretty normal. All right, now to the big boxes. We're running at a we're running at a toolbox bench. Mm -hmm. Let's see what we got. Oh, lots of stickers. Yeah, tons of stickers. What is that? Oh, I think this is just all merch. This is not all merch because there's wires in here. I'm just kidding. Yes, there is wires. Can't tell what that is. Is this? Lots of keychains, stickers, car mounters, um, so GPS. All your, there's all your cables yeah, this for your GPS, your Oh, mounting, this might be my display. Mounting hardware. Let's see what's in here in this fancy box. That would be the ECU, PC. PCM. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we got the computer. That's cool. It's nice and tiny, so it'll be easy to mount wherever we want to mount it. Mm -hmm. Here, pull this box down on the ground and run out of bench stop room. Seven inch Aces EFI display. I think we're, are you gonna mount that in the dash or are you gonna put it somewhere else? I might try to put it to the side. Uh, I don't know. I kind of want to keep some of my original gauge cluster. Yeah, I'm not if sure. We can get it to work. I don't know. That could be, could be a lot of work. All right. Spark plug wires right here. Okay, it's self-explanatory. Probably need to open that one. Actually, do open it. Let's see. Are those build your own? Oh, ceramic boots. You don't, you don't have to open both ones, bud. Oh. Nice. They're build your own, so we can hide these wires and make it look nice and clean. That's good. I was worried that maybe these were pre-made. They're going to be way too long, but... It's gonna take a little bit extra work, but we're gonna hide all of those wires so you can't even tell this thing has spark plug there wires. We go. Like we do on every single car we do here. All right, last two boxes, we have another shirt. Oh, another shirt. Is it extra large? That's the real question. It's yeah, an extra it large. So they hit us up with three extra large shirts and nobody wears an extra large shirt. So let's go talk to Scott about that. All right, final package. This is probably the unit itself. This is what we've been waiting for. Oh, oh yeah. I ordered With gaskets. I ordered the pink one. What the hell? Thank goodness. It's a pretty sick looking little unit right there. Let's pull that thing out and look at it. I just uh, want to hold it and touch it and see what it feels like. That is a pretty cool thing. How's the weight on it? Pretty light. Is it? Surprisingly light. It is actually surprisingly light. Hmm. Mm -hmm. That is something else. Yeah, that thing is pretty legit looking. I'm pretty excited to see how this thing works. It's definitely going to work better than that piece of crap that's on there now with its yes. stuck injector I'm just blowing fuel at idle. All right, we reached the end of the box. Well, we're at the point now where the intake's getting ready to come off, and so Jackson's gonna do the honors of pulling his first intake off. Nice. Nice 
What's up guys, Saturday morning, bright and early, still got bed beard. Uh, we're here thrashing on the Camaro. Eh, mail truck. That thing is uh, being neglected right now because of Jackson. So a couple updates, what we got done the other night. Um, we got the intake off. Valve covers off, we got the exhaust manifolds off, and we are in the process of trying to get the headers dropped in. We did break one stud on this side, so I'm gonna attack that first thing this morning here, that front stud. So I'm gonna try to weld a nut on there, see if we can get that thing turned loose, and then this header is ready to go on. We got it stuffed in there. That was a pain in the butt. We had to pull the starter off and then hold it crooked and put the starter back on in order to get that thing up in there. This one, we are hitting on the wiper motor, which is now loose, the master cylinder, brake booster, head, frame, uh, clutch slave cylinder. So there's a lot of stuff in the way on this one. Uh, once he gets that brake booster loose, it's always working on now and there. We're gonna see if we can just rotate everything over just a little bit to give us that half inch of room we need to get this thing slipped down in there. We might try pushing it up from the bottom if uh, once that master cylinder is loose or that brake booster. Oh Lord, that took like, well, how long were we out here, Jackson, working on getting those manifolds off? Like four hours, two hours, seven hours, a hundred hours. It's been like 22 years since I've worked on a third gen. Um, I was feeling a little nostalgic from back in uh, high school, post high school days, helping AJ out working on his. And uh, there's a lot of crap in these engine bays that does not need to be here, but we're getting there. We're gonna get her cleaned up and uh, make her look nice and pretty. I can officially announce that uh, we have partnered up with Aces EFI. All right guys, we're gonna be stripping some wires today. I just got done pulling the PCM out of the interior of the car. And we got this clip clipped into our PCM. Hold out, we're gonna start chasing wires and deleting all the factory stock stuff so we can put in our nice new Aces um, standalone harness. So I'm just gonna start going and getting rid of all of these um, wire casings. And yeah, I just try to start chasing them, so. He's gonna strip the loom out and figure out where the hell everything goes and what can be deleted. In case you haven't noticed already, we got our brand new eBay special three core dual fan aluminum radiator. Looks much nicer than stock and probably performs a lot better too. We went ahead and just threw it in, fit right in there, pretty good. I had to take off some of the stock uh, fan shroud and other stuff like that. She's been held in by some zip ties right now because I'll have to fat up some sort of bracket to hold it in. But for the time being, I think that'll do a lot better than stock. What's up guys, Saturday night, working on project third gen. Just got back from being a uh, rib judge at Rib Fest in Waverly. I am not qualified to do that and I weigh too many ribs, but uh, we are back hammering away on project third gen. What are we working on, Jackson? I'm trying to put a fuel pump in. Just trying to put the fuel pump in. So we're getting the old fuel pump out. 
trying to cut the uh, old crimp lines off and uh, get the new one in. So we got the tank dropped this afternoon and we are just uh, working our way around to put a new, what do we put a 255 in? Yep. Wall brawl 255. So as soon as we get these clips cut out, we're going to go ahead and uh, slide that tube off or hose off and uh, get the new pump in. We're going to get this thing slapped back up in there with a new, fresh, ready to race. Jackson's getting mad. He's annoyed. I'm not mad. He's annoyed. He's mad. You want a razor blade to cut that hose? Or did you get yeah. did you get the hose clamp off? I already got both of them off. Alright, well I'll just cut the hose. Slice that hose. Let me get your razor blade. Here, go get a razor blade. <clears throat> That'll work. All right, guys, update on uh, Project 3rd Gen with the ACES unit. We have been deleting all the factory engine harness out of here, everything that we don't need. And we just started laying in the ACES harness, just trying to get it laid out, figure out how it's going to work. We were going to try to put everything over in that corner over there, but it didn't line up that well. So we went ahead and routed, every, routed everything through there. And Jackson, where are we going to put the ECU now? Thinking about putting the ECU back in the stock in its location underneath the dash right there. Just where it was factory. That's kind of where it kind of lines up pretty good. So yeah, we got the harness. We're going to tuck it down through the factory hole here. We ran the um, can wire, which where the heck did that go? Here it is. So we ran the can wire down through and we did order a um, what company was that? Uh, Reversion Racer. No, it wasn't. It was a different one because they didn't have. Reversion did not have one for a 91, 92. Three. So we got a. Went through a different company. I'm skipping my brain right now, but we got that coming. But that was like a two to four week lead time, and we ordered that about two weeks ago. So who knows when we're going to get that. So we're probably going to end up running the display just somewhere over here for now. Hell, it might even stay right there just for the time being, um, just to get it up and running and get it tuning until the rest of our parts come in. So I think we got long enough leads to the PCM to mount it up here on this kick panel right here, or we'll go straight back on the firewall right there. And then that should get it out of the way and keep it out of the way of people's feet and all that jazz. So that's where we're going with right now because that's where the harness laid out best for this scenario. Um, what else have we been doing? Oh, uh, tried to get our fan wired a little bit. Got our relay. Oh, started figuring out our fan wiring and relaying. We're trying to figure out where we're going to mount all of our relays. I don't know. We're kind of thinking that this area right here is going to be all of our relay distribution area. We're going to have four, four of them, I believe. Yep. So, figure out a way to try to make that look clean. We also debated on just tucking the relays down into this hole right here, just to clean the harness up, clean the engine bay up, make it look nice and clean so you can't see any of that stuff. Um, I don't know, we'll figure that out. And then we're gonna loom. See, this is our wires for our aces. This is ground. Uh, I think, I don't know about this one. What does that one say over there? One one of them is hot on ignition, and I don't remember what the orange one is. Hot it's right there. What does that say? Pump. Oh, that yeah. The orange one runs over the fuel pump, which we're going to maintain the factory fuel pump harness, or at least the part that goes back in the car. So we've got that wire isolated and cut and labeled over here. Fuel pump. So we'll tie that orange wire into this wire, which will run back down into the car. So we got to bring that, that orange wire across the firewall. 
These are our hotter ignitions we'll tie into um, for turning on the ECU and triggering all that stuff. Yeah, we got a lot of work to do. We did get our other set of headers in today, so we'll see if we can make those things work. We got the rear end out the other night. We got the gas tank down, got the new fuel pump in. Um, the new fuel pump does work. We confirmed that because while testing to make sure our fuel pump water was right, we sprayed fuel out of one of those hoses there, which was pretty cool. Had a little fountain going on. That's right. All right, so I went ahead and installed our fresh, brand new um, alternator power steering bracket. Pretty easy install. And yeah, it looks a lot better and is not actually broken. So that'll actually help you a little bit. All right, so this original header is by far not my proudest moment. I might've had one too many cocktails uh, on Saturday night when we were trying to make this thing work. So we started out trying to get this thing in here. And this ran about like that. So we kind of started dimpling that there. This is never gonna stay here. So you can kind of see how the header ran before. Uh, this piece. And this piece kind of went up there and this was where it was hitting on the cross member. So we got it to drop down there, fine. You know, and that's a pretty aggressive dimple, but uh, you know, whatever. Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. Now this part is where all the, uh, the badness happens. So this is the top part of the collector, which the collector ended up actually being back here on the original header. So I had modified it originally, came straight down over here and we put a 90 in it. Don't mind those TIG welds because guess what? I don't know how to TIG weld, um, but I was trying. And the, that was what we ended up with uh, on Saturday night after we were done dimpling it to where we almost got it to work. And Sunday morning I said, this isn't gonna work. Let's throw this in the garbage can. So like I said, we ordered a new set of headers. I chopped up the driver side header to get all these pieces and pipes and bends. And this is what we are left with. Like I said, we dimpled the shit out of this thing. I mean, that's, that's no good for flow. This I probably would have been okay with, like that was fine, whatever, but that's pretty, I don't know, that looks, that looks terrible. So that had to go in the trash. Also, you know, like I said, this piece up here, that had to go away. So now we have a header. First time making headers, I don't know what I'm doing. I did uh, set up my uh, MIG so that I could stainless steel weld with MIG because I have no idea how to TIG weld, but I can kind of MIG weld. So got that set up. So that we're gonna go ahead and get this thing finalized, welded. Everything fits pretty dang good. Clears all the areas we needed to clear. And I don't know, I'm kind of proud of myself. You guys can judge my welds, some attack welds, and you can judge all this stuff when uh, it's all final welded. I don't mind. Looks like we just broke my spot weld there that was holding that in place, but eh, it looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. They're pretty tight gaps. Some of these aren't perfect because they're right on the radius, but we'll fill that in. So that is a header now that'll fit a third gen Camaro with a five speed. Only took four days, probably five by the time we're done. We still gotta get this thing fired. We've got, uh, we've got some new parts just came in this morning from Aces. Went and uh, saw our buddies at Speedway and picked up all the rest of our stuff. We need to get the fuel line wrapped up. And that header is in there now. It's booger welded to hell, but it's not gonna leak, so. And, oh, son of a biscuit. We've got the exhaust back to the Y right there. So it's gonna be good enough to start it and get it going. We got our O2 sensor in on that side. So we should be able to fire this thing and get an accurate O2 reading. Uh, let's see, we're gonna get the power steering pulling back on. Jackson put the radiator in too soon. So we're gonna pull that back out right now. So we get that power steering pump on. 
Uh, today, what are we gonna do? Fuel system and electrical. Yep. The rest of it, and hopefully, by the end of the day, this engine bay will be pretty much done and ready to go. We gotta get the uh, spark plug wires made and get the plugs in and all that jazz, so. We got some work ahead of us. But this thing will be started this weekend. 100% guaranteed we're gonna get it started. Probably won't be today, but maybe tomorrow. All right guys, we're gonna show you how to lock out the distributor. Um, this has weights and springs in it. Uh, that is what controls the timing on a non-computer controlled ignition. It rotates the cap as it spins faster, so it advances it. Uh, pretty simple to do. You just gotta take these springs off the top. Oops, throw them on the ground because you know you don't need them anymore. Pull these little bushings off. Take your weights out. And then we're gonna go over here to this roll pin and we're just gonna drive that out with a punch that fits nicely in that area. You don't have to drive it all the way out. Maybe. That kit comes off, there's gonna be a metal washer bushing on there. Another one on there. Let's go ahead and take those off. Remember the order they went on. And you're gonna go ahead and pull this distributor shaft up. And then we're gonna undo this uh, bushing nut here. Oh my goodness, okay. Well, it'll slide out so we can do this, I guess, this way too. Retain the nut, remove this bushing, and then we're just gonna rotate, back up a little bit. We're just gonna rotate this 180 degrees so that this pin goes right down into here. And now it's locked out. Put your nut back on. Snug it up, slide your unit back in there. Put your gear back on. Now you wanna make sure that your holes line up, so this is a tricky part if you have your roll pin still in. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to see that. Give it a couple taps. If I had a vise, I'd probably put it in a vise. Once you get that started, now it's locked in. And flip it over. Get it down close, don't hit your gear, and then switch over to your punch and drive it home.
There we go. Distributor's locked out, ready to go back in the car, we can put the rotor back on. All right guys, so when you're setting this thing up with the ACES distributor locked out, states in the instructions that the engine has to be 15 degrees before top dead center. If you look straight down here, our harmonic balancer has a piece of orange tape on it. This uh, balancer was not degreed. It didn't have all the de degree tick marks on it. So a way that I figured that out was I measured the distance of the harmonic balancer with a piece of uh, wire we had laying around. It was like 21 and, oh, I don't remember what it was now, 21 and uh, 7 sixteenths or something like that. Maybe it was, it was 13 sixteenths, 12 sixteenths. I don't know. It was 21 and something or other. So I ended up, what I did is I just measured the whole length, divided it in half, that gave us our 180. I divided that number in half. This side's short because I cut off the piece we needed. Divided that in half, then divided that in half again to give us 45, 180, 90, 45. And then I took this distance here that was, uh, what was it, two and 11 sixteenths and divided that by three. Came out really close to 15 sixteenths. It was just a smidge under 15 sixteenths according to the math. So I measured over 15 sixteenths and cut it right there. That's gonna get us within the ballpark for 15 degrees. So I stuck that on the balancer um, right at the uh, TDC line and rotated the motor over and I gave us our 15 degrees before top dead center. There is a little bit of play you can do with that. Um, once you get the car started inside the computer, if it's not perfectly lined up, and then you're going to want to go ahead and pull the cap off and pull the rotor off and then the paddles that are in there you want to line that up i should have got a video of this but i didn't because i was just doing it in the moment um i guess i could pull that back off it's only like five minutes all right so with the cap and rotor off if you look Down in here, there's these paddles on the distributor shaft itself. And so those are the what go across this pickup. And there's, it's probably gonna be really hard to see because of course it landed right on top of that. But basically there's a little magnetic pickup right in the middle of this thing. You wanna make sure and get this as close as possible, uh, a paddle as close as possible to the center of that pickup right in the middle of the magnet. And the way you adjust that is you just loosen the distributor hold down and then you can rotate the uh, distributor until it lines up perfectly centered with one of those paddles. Now if you don't have this thing perfectly um, 15 degrees, you want to, we want to get it as close as possible because it's going to aid in the starting of this and getting it going for the initial tune. There is, like I said, there is a... Uh, Ability to adjust a little bit of offset if the paddle just doesn't quite line up perfectly with it. So we're going to go ahead and put this all back together. Last night we were able to get all of our fuel lines ran. So we're using the factory hard lines that come from the tank. This is going to be our um, inlet or our feed side. Went ahead and just mounted the fuel filter in the engine bay just because we didn't want to mess with any of the factory lines. That line loops around, comes in here, it runs through the ACES unit, goes out the back side, back around up here to our fuel pressure regulator, goes in the side, and then out the bottom, going out the bottom goes back into our return line, which goes back to the tank. Uh, we got our fuel pressure regulator mounted over there on the inner fender, uh, so we do need to finalize the fuel pressure and get all that stuff set up. We were checking this thing for fuel line leaks earlier, so we were priming the pump a couple times. We had a few leaks over here. Uh, where are you at, Jackson? A few leaks over here. Yeah. Somebody forgot to put a little Teflon tape on the gauge. That made a big old mess. Um, we got all that stuff finalized. And then we were having a leak coming out of behind this sensor right here. So me being me, I just pulled that sensor off and seen where that leak was coming from. 
And at, when you turn the key on and this thing primes, it does like three shots or four shots just to wet the... Uh, sure, we'll go ahead and do it. So it did three shots there and that kind of just wets the whistle so you can get an easy start with it. Um, contacted Scott at Aces and said, hey, this thing's leaking out of the side here, what's going on? And it's a super simple fix. Uh, basically the throttle blades are so tight on this and they were closed all the way that it was actually pooling fuel in there and that was causing the fuel to run out through the bearing that's on the end of this. So all we did was crank open the uh, throttle blades just a little bit and that solved the problem. So just something to be aware of on this. Um, Cause yeah, I was kind of a little bummed when we first did that and we started leaking fuel right there going, what the heck, a brand new unit. And basically it's just throttle blades are so tight on that that it was just actually holding the fuel and it was allowing it to run through here. When the car is running, there's no issues because obviously there's vacuum running through all of that stuff. So just something to look out for. If you see fuel leaking out of here, super simple fix. Just go over here. Crank down on this little guy right here. That's gonna open up the throttle blade just a little bit and it's gonna allow that fuel to run out so you don't have an issue. So just something to be aware of when you're first getting this thing going if there is, if you're experiencing an issue where there's fuel leaking out of the side there. Nothing to worry about. There's nothing wrong with the unit. You just need to do a little more dialing in. We're gonna to try to see what the initial fuel pressure is on prime. 10, 20, 30. Okay. Oh shit. Yeah, she's all the way up to 62%. Let's go ahead and dial that back. 62 PSI. All right, go ahead and prime it again. We're gonna set the initial about 45. Just to start, let's go ahead and hit it again. All that good right there. So that, uh, I think they said a minimum of 43 on this. I don't know what the maximum is. Uh, so we'll just kind of set it a little higher than the minimum and we'll start from there. All right, so this is the first time seeing the display actually turned on. Jackson just got all this hooked up in here. Uh, it actually looks pretty cool. It's pretty. I like the uh, color display and the, uh, the layout on it's pretty nice looking so far. Um, so we're going to go through the, uh, the setup and the initial uh, start features that you got to do in order to get this thing running with the uh, unit you have. So let's get into that. Alright guys, well I messed up and uh, did not uh, hit the record button here a second ago. But uh, when it initially starts up, you're going to have the... Uh, the two screens like that were just on there, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and click on the left one. It's gonna say, do you want this to show up on your initial startup? Just hit okay. And then that's gonna bring you into the selector system. So we have a kill shot unit, they had, and they have a lot of different uh, systems in here. But we are working with the kill shot, so we're gonna go ahead and select kill shot. And now we are configured. So that was super simple. I wonder if it would just start right now. We probably should do some more configuration, but I don't know. Should probably read all the instructions too. Should we see if it'll start? Mm -hmm. The battery's really dead. I think we need to charge the battery. All right, now that we got our main screen here, um, we're gonna go ahead and click on the uh, settings buttons. We're gonna start the wizards, and we're going to go to the start wizard. Um, we're gonna say kill shot. We're gonna go, this thing is pretty much stock. Wait, it's 100% cam stock. Uh, Wideband O2 sensor, we just have one. We're going to go to magnetic, since we have the uh, ACES unit. We gotta type the number of cylinders in here. 
try. I don't want that to go. Oh, sorry, I'm retarded. Let's try that again. We're gonna type the number of injectors in here. It's the four injectors because there's four injectors um, for this unit. I believe they're 100 pound injectors. That's good. Uh, injector flow rate is going to be, what is that, 100? 100 pounds now. They're 100 pound injectors, so. All right, maybe it's, I'm not good at toggling. Slowly toggle this down and get it close. The instructions say put it at 100.53. So that's what we're gonna do. Okay, and we're gonna go over to engine displacement. This is a 305. No, should have just uh, kept toggling. There we go, 305. Um, we're gonna set the idle to 850, that should be good. Um, there we go, we got all those set up. We're gonna go ahead and uh, click save. Yes, we want to save those settings. So now please key off for five seconds to make configurations effective. I don't know if I'm supposed to just turn it off or hit OK, but we'll find out. Mm-hmm, we'll, we'll find out. out. Kill shot, yes, we could probably say don't show that to us again. Let's go in here and just double check that and make sure all that stuff stayed the same. Uh, let's see, stock cam. Let's see, yeah, stock cam. Okay, yep, so that saved everything, so we should be good there, so we can just back out of this. Yes, we wanna exit that. And we will go on to the next step. Okay, so now we're gonna verify that all of our sensors are reading the way they should. Obviously, um, RPMs are at zero. Map is pretty close to one bar for atmospheric. What does it say it should be in KPAs, 95? 95 to 102 KPA. Yeah, so that's reading good. ETC seems a tad bit high. Um, it's about, I don't know, 80 degrees in here, so it might be reading a little off there. Let's go ahead and check the rest of the sensors. We're gonna go over here to monitor. Monitor sensors. Uh, battery voltage is right. RPM, map, that's all good. What else, What was the other ones we were supposed to look at? TPS, so we gotta check the TPS. We're at zero, thro zero throttle right now. Um, we depress it and we get up to 87.8. So we need to make a little bit of a adjustment in our linkage because it says we should be between what 90 and 100 mm -hmm. and uh, I think I know what the issue is on that on our linkage so we just need to make a little bit of adjustment to that but that's all working good the way it needs to be um, so yeah I think everything we got our targets in here for our AFRs and our actuals so I think everything's reading the way it should let's back out of here Okay, so at this point, uh, we've run through the wizard and the setup. We verified that our gauges or our sensors are working properly, so we're ready to go ahead and try to start this thing. We also did the checklist, um, made sure there's no fuel leaks. We did that earlier today. Um, yeah, so let's see what happens. I think we got a dead battery.
I'd opened them up way too much. And I had it sitting up here about 1,700 RPM. So I went ahead and backed that down. And I think we're idling about 930 right now, somewhere in there. And uh, yeah, it seems like it's uh, really working pretty good. So let's move on to the next step. First thing we want to do, now they got it idling and running, Let's go check for any leaks, make sure there's not a puddle of oil on the ground or any coolant or anything like that. Just because we did have the intake off and all that stuff, we want to make sure we don't have any coolant leaks in there. Uh, but yeah, so far, this has been super easy to start and just get it to idle. I'm really happy with it. Everything looks good. The only coolant's on the ground is stuff we dumped on there earlier. Alright guys, we're taking our first drive with the Aces EFI unit installed. We got this thing running last night. Um, it started up pretty easy. We're just kind of trying to, we're going to limp it to the gas station because it's about out of gas. Maybe Jackson will clean the windshield there because it's still there. Um, yeah, so far, I mean, it's driving pretty good. It's definitely driving better than uh, we drove before with that sticking injector. I gotta say, so far the Aces thing has been pretty easy to get up and running and driving. We really didn't do much of anything. We tried to adjust the idle just a little bit so we could have a little bit lower of an idle. Um, but yeah, it's been it's been pretty easy going so far. Let's get a little gas in this thing. Fifteen. 
probably five miles or so. Definitely cleaning itself up a little bit as far as AFR. We used to lean into it. I mean, it would go all the way up to like 1920 when we first leaned into it. We just leaned into it a little bit. It's back down to 15. So we're getting closer to that target area we want to be at. Um, definitely need to get a muffler on this thing. This thing is a crap of monster and a backfire monster on diesel right now. That's gonna be a wrap for third gen Camaro. We got Jackson's first car up and running. We got some headers put on it. We got the Aces EFI unit on it, new radiator, fans. I don't know, we just made the thing look a heck of a lot better. And it also performs a lot better. It's still a 305, but eh, it is what it is. So I can't thank Aces enough for hooking us up with this kill shot unit. I mean, it really by far was the easiest part of this project. If you had an adequate fuel system to handle it and didn't have to change the intake and do all that stuff, I'm pretty sure you could get this kill shot unit up and installed and running in an afternoon, maybe a weekend if you you know really wanted to drag it out. But it, it's it started awesome. I mean, I can't I can't believe that literally typed in the startup wizard. You know, it took us probably two minutes to go through that, and the thing just fired right up and idled like instantly. Uh, we, I couldn't even do that on the mail truck. We had to call on the big guns to get this thing running. Um, had to have a local tuner come over and save our butt because we could not get the thing to idle. Turns out it was something stupid that we did, but that's fine. They figured it out. This Aces stuff just bolts on, it goes right in and it works. Um, huge shout out to those guys again. And don't forget to use promo code FTP10, save yourself 10% site wide. I'm kind of glad this project's done because I'm burned out of it. These headers kick my butt, but I'm sure we're gonna be working on it again here in the next week or so. So that being said, thanks for watching. Go check out Aces EFI, check out ftpspeedshop.com. Get yourself some merch, help support the channel. Don't forget to use that promo code at Aces and we'll catch you on the next one, later.